Hi, I'm Nora. Welcome back to DIY Dollhouse. Today we're going to start making furniture for the bedroom. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make is an area rug. So an area rug, here's my example, is something that is going to cover up a kind of a larger space in the room and it can be really be any shape. This one's circular, but um, if you don't like the way that looks, you can also make one that is a different shape. Today I'm going to show you this one and the resources that you'll need are going to be yarn, thread, and a needle. So the yarn that I've chosen to use is this variegated rainbow colored yarn. And variegated means that it changes colors and this one happens to be kind of a rainbow of colors. You can also always use a single color of yarn and if you want your single colors of yarn to turn out to have different colors within the rug, what you can do is you can initially take three colors and braid them together and then use that strand from the braid to uh, weave it in the way that I'm going to show you and that will create a rug that has some nice variation of colors. You can also pick out uh, yarn that has multiple colors like this one does where the as it as you go on it changes colors. So the next thing that you'll need is your thread and even though I used brown thread you can see here um, I use the brown thread. I'm going to today show you in my demonstration with white thread because I think it will show up a little bit better and be easier for you to see. And then you'll need a needle. So be careful when using a needle because the end is very sharp. Um, you can use kind of a smaller needle, a shorter one, and if you're all at all worried about poking yourself, it's a good idea to use a thimble, which is a small round piece of metal that goes over your thumb. So if your thumb gets close to the needle, you don't have to worry about pricking yourself. Um, if you're a child watching this video, make sure that you have an adult to help you with the sewing part. And if you're not comfortable using a needle and thread, you can always use glue. I'd recommend a craft glue that you can use on fabric, um, or you can also use hot glue with, an, with adult supervision. And just remember with hot glue that you always need to turn it off, uh, unplug it after you're done using it, and make sure that you never touch the tip because that is very hot. So let's begin with the needle and thread. So go ahead and pull out a piece of thread. I like to use thread that is about, going to be about the length of my arms, one arm actually, when it's doubled. So I'll just pull out about that much, and then I'm going to cut it when it gets to be about there. All right, so about that much, and you just cut it off. Okay, now you're going to thread your needle, just carefully stick the thread through the eye, that little gap in the needle, and pull it through, and then tie the two ends together into a knot. I would recommend double knotting this, just holds a little bit better when it's in a double knot. So once you have that double knot, you can go ahead and take your scissors and snip it off so that there's just a little bit of extra beyond where the knot is. Okay, and this will be what you'll use. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to fold it and bend it right like this. Then I'm going to take my needle and very carefully I'm going to thread it through and pull it until the knot goes through and stops, right? So you wanna make sure you thread it through, not between, so that your knot is actually pulled through the yarn. For the rest of what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go between 
the pieces of yarn. So I'm going to roll it so that I have a little spiral. And now I'm going to pull my needle carefully around. So I want to pull it around the yarn and back through the middle. And I'm basically just tying each piece of the yarn, every two pieces, I'm essentially tying them together. So I'm just going to keep doing this, just pulling it over and through as I continue to curl my yarn into a spiral. And once you can see now here, I'm going to, instead of going all the way through the middle, now I'm going to go through the first piece so that I'm always looping around two. Okay, I turn it and I make sure that I loop around and pull and pull and you can see I'm tying these two pieces together and as I continue to turn, I'm continuing to tie the outer two pieces together. Now one thing that's important when you're working with this is that you uh, want to make sure that that inner part is pretty tight. So as once you start, get started, you can actually drop your needle and you can tighten this a little bit. Okay, you can pull both the thread and the yarn a little bit tighter so that you have a nice tight weave and that the inner part of your rug does not have a gap. Okay, and you can continue to do that as you go so that it stays nice and tight, but you wanna make sure that you don't pull it too tightly or else instead of a rug, you'll end up with a hat, right? If you pull it very tightly, then this part is going to pull together and you're going to end up with more of a hat shape. So you wanna make sure that you leave it loose enough that it stays nice and flat. Another thing to keep in mind as you're working on this is that you're going to be using a lot of thread, but don't worry about that. You don't wanna start out with the thread so long that it gets tangled while you're working. So it's okay if you end up running out of it. I can show you what to do when that happens, but I would recommend only using thread that is about as long as one arm. And so it will depend on your individual size, how long that is. Another thing is not to worry too much if you're noticing that your threads are going in different directions. So let me show you on here. So if you look cl up close, you can see that my thread goes in different directions. And um, if you're trying to make a area rug that looks like this, that's actually gives it some of its kind of homemade organic quality. It makes it look a little more earthy and natural. If you want to have a rug that looks very modern, you might want to choose a thread that's very close to the color of your rug um, rather than one that will stand out so you can't see the stitching so much. But it depends on what you want it to look like when it's finished. So I'm just going to do a few more stitches here and then I'll show you what to do when you run out of thread. Okay, so you can see I still have about 
two or three inches of thread left. And that's important to leave a little bit. If you sew right up into the end of the needle, you're not going to be able to tie a knot, which is really important because you need to tie a knot to keep all the thread that you just worked with from coming undone. So once you have just a little bit left, what you wanna do is you wanna stick the needle through the yarn. And you can stick it through just one piece or you can stick it through more than one piece. It's important to stick it through, not between, because if it's just between, it's going to come unraveled. Then you want to tie a knot. So you can see I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little loop and I'm going to stick my needle back through that loop and I'm going to tie a knot. Okay, and once I have a knot tied, I can take my scissors, cut off the end with the needle, and then I can tie a second knot. I'm really into tying more than one knot. I just think it makes it a little less likely to come undone. And that will depend also on the weight of your yarn. So one thing along with the color choice of your yarn, you can also choose to use different yarns of different weight. So the weight has to do with the thickness of your yarn. So a yarn that's a heavier or a bulkier weight is going to have be a little bit thicker than a thinner or lighter weight yarn. And the kind of the weight that you choose will depend a little bit on your individual dollhouse and what fits well within the space and how large you want the rug to be um, and how thick you want the pieces of the rug to be. But once you're finished, again, you wanna tie it off the same way I just showed you, and then you can place it inside of the room. So here's my bedroom, and I'm going to put that kind of for the moment in the middle of the floor because there's not much else there in that room besides those pictures that I put on the wall. So. Now, I am going to create a bed because it really can't be a bedroom without a bed. So for the bed, what I want to do is, first I'm gonna find a place to put my needle that's a safe spot where I'm not going to accidentally drop it onto the floor. Then I'm going to find the materials for my bed. Now what I use for the bed, what I'm going to use is a little box. So you can see this is, one of those boxes that's often used for jewelry. And the nice thing about these boxes is they often come with a small piece of batting or cotton. And batting is just a synthetic material that's used for stuffing. It's very kind of similar, lightweight, similar to cotton. So this piece of batting will make a nice mattress for my bed. This is going to be the bed frame or the base part. And then I'm going to use some fabric to cover this. Now, you may see in the background of my video and sometimes wandering around my videos that I have a dog and she is just a little older than a puppy and one time when she was jumping onto my bed she accidentally ripped a quite a large tear in a bed sheet. So I am using some of that bed sheet uh, for this project. Another thing you can use if you don't have a torn bed sheet is you can use um, other kinds of clothing that you've turned into rags. So clothing that no longer fits you and maybe has stains or tears, things that couldn't be donated and reused, um, make a really good for this project. You can also buy material from a fabric shop, but I like to reuse what I have. So this was an old shirt that had some tears and I have cut it up and I'm using it for this project. So find some different materials and then the other thing that's nice about having an animal, if you have a cat or a dog or another kind of animal that plays with stuffed toys and tears them, is that you can also find batting inside of those toys. So if some, a toy, an animal toy, like a dog toy has been torn apart, you can reuse that stuffing for this project. If you don't have that, you can um, buy batting or you can use things like cotton balls or um, curled up pieces of fabric. There's lots of ways to stuff this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take my batting and my the screen piece of fabric, which I'm going to use as my bed sheet, and I'm going to make the fitted bed sheet, which means I want it to wrap tightly around this. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to 
take it from a corner and I want to have enough fabric over that it's going to wrap around the side and cover some of the back. I don't want it to go all the way across the back, um, but it's, it's nice if it comes a little bit around. Okay, so once I have enough my fabric arranged in a way that will work for that, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to cut a little slit in this. And this project is actually going to require a hot glue gun or sewing. Um, I'm going to show you with the, the hot glue method. So I'm going to plug in my glue gun. So remember, this is not something you want to do until you're really close to working on the project. It's not a good idea to leave it, leave it plugged in for a long time. But once you're ready for the next project, you can go ahead, let that warm up a little bit. And while I do that, I'm going to figure out how much fabric I'll need. And I'm going to, need to cut a little bit of extra, a little bit beyond what I think I'll need, just in case. Because it's better to have too much, I can always cut off some, than to have not enough. One nice thing about certain kinds of fabric, including this one, is that some kinds of fabric um, have a grain to them, or in other words, they're sewn in very straight lines of threads. And one way you can tell if that's the case is that if you try ripping it, it will rip in a straight line. <laughs> All right, that one already had an extra tear, so let's see if that's large enough to fit. And I think that will work very well. Maybe it's a little too long, but again, I can always cut off some or I can wrap it extra. Now, I could just wrap it like this, but you can see that's not very neat. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut off a little bit or rip off a little bit. And then when my glue gun gets up, I'll show you how to glue it in a way that will make it a little bit more neat. Okay. So let's see, that's pretty good. So you can see when I fold this now, um, it meets in a nice seam and that is pretty much perfect for what I want to do. So the next thing I'm going to do before I start gluing is I'm going to take the corner of this and I'm going to create a little bit of a snip going diagonally down the corner. And the amount that I need to cut that, I will determine based on the amount that's going to be folded over. So in this case, I have about an inch and a half or two inches that I'm going to fold. So I fold it one way and then I can fold it the other way. And you can see when you use this method, it creates just a cleaner, nicer looking fold, more like a folded fitted bed sheet. So now let's see if my glue gun is ready. And the way that I'm going to test it is I'm going to just put a little bit on this box you never want to touch it with your finger. You always want to test it onto something and you can see that's nice and warmed up. So that will work very well. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bend this and fold it and bend this and fold it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other corners, and then I'm going to glue it onto my bed or box in this case. So I'm going to cut about the same amount on each corner. Okay, wrap it over that batting. 
Okay. And now, let's see if that's the right amount. Can bend this. Looks like I have a little bit of excess, so I'm going to actually cut this off and try again. A little bit of trial and error involved to get this just right. So you can see bending and then bending. Okay, those two ends. And then I will cut this now that I've cut it a little bit smaller. Cut this. And I'm going to also bend these over and bend these. All right. And once it looks pretty good to you, so it's good to test it out before you make do any gluing. But once it looks pretty good, okay, that's going to fit. Then you can start to glue it so that it stays in place. So. And for thin fabric like this, just be really careful not to burn yourself as you're gluing. Another way if you're worried about hurting yourself but it being too hot, the glue, you can always flip it and just press from the other side. That's a good way to keep your fingers nice and safe. And you'll notice that I have these extra little flaps sticking off. That's okay. I'm planning to cut those off. So. Okay, and now I just fix those final little folds, you might have to fold a little bit more in. Okay, I'm gonna see if that'll all look good. I think I may cut off a little bit of this fabric. Anything that's sticking out too much, I don't like the look of it. Now is the time to cut it off. And just remember this underside, you won't actually be able to see. So think about a little too much. Think about what you want that top part to look like. That's the mattress, top part of the mattress. All right, I'm going to glue this down. So back side is the part that has the opening. Gently press that down. Now, I have a little bed, a little mattress on a bed frame. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to create a sheet. So that's the fitted sheet. I want to create a sheet that's going to hang loosely down. That looks pretty good. And my next piece of fabric is going to actually pull this down a little bit, so it's okay if it's sticking out right now. The weight of the next one will push it down. You can also glue it a little bit if you want it to be, to stay like that. But try this first, try putting on the second piece of fabric and see what happens. So this is going to be my blanket, and I'm going to leave a little bit of the sheet underneath showing so that you can see that there are, that it's there. This material doesn't rip quite as nicely as the other one, so I'm just going to cut it.
if you're not sure about your success in cutting in straight lines or you want it to be more precise, you can always take a ruler or a piece of chalk if it's a darker color fabric and measure it out more precisely. All right, so there is the blanket. And the next thing that my bed needs is a pillow. And so I am going to, for the pillow, I am going to use ribbon. Now, the ribbon um, that works really nicely for this is a fabric ribbon rather than one of those plasticky ribbons or something that doesn't have a lot of movement to it. So make sure that it's something that is not going to rip immediately when you try to sew it or glue it. Um, and then it gets a nice, a nice round bend. Okay, but pick out a material that you like. And I already made one as an example, so I'm just going to match this one to make sure it's about the same size. You'll, you're going to want to stuff it, so it's actually going to end up being a little bit smaller than when you measure it out. So make it a little bit longer than you think you want it. And often on a bed, you'll have two pillows or even more. Um, so it can be fun to try different kinds of, of ribbon and see what kinds of different colors and patterns you get. Now with your ribbon, you'll want to cut it in a straight line. And a lot of times with this kind of ribbon, it will start to fray. So what you can do is even though I turned off my glue gun, it probably is still warm enough to do this. And I don't want it to be so hot that it burns me. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue on each end here. And that way, first of all, I can glue the ends together. And second of all, it actually helps prevent fraying. So make sure, this I can only touch because I turn off my glue gun so it's no longer so hot. If you left yours on, wait at least 30 seconds or a minute before touching it. Again, really need to not touch very hot glue. But, all right, that is going to get my pillow started. And the next thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you with the white thread. I used brown thread on this so you can't really see the stitching, but this one you'll be able to because I'm going to use white thread. So the kind of stitch I'm going to use is called a blanket stitch. And if you're not familiar with that kind of stitch, basically it means that it's a combination of a loop over and then looping through with the needle. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Again, you'll want no more than the length of your arm. That's about how much is easy to control when you're sewing. And you might think with something so small, you don't need very much thread at all. Actually, with the blanket stitch, you're going to use a little bit more thread than you would with a more simple kind of a stitch. So I would recommend keeping your thread about the length of your arm. I'm just going to tie that into a knot. And as I mentioned, I like double knotting. Okay, cut off the end, hold it a little bit. And I'm going to start inside so that my knot ends up inside of my pillow and I don't have to worry about seeing it. And then I'm going to go over and through both pieces of ribbon. A little lower. Okay, I'm going to go through both pieces of ribbon and then this is the important part with a blanket stitch, is that I'm going to actually 
as I start to pull it, I'm going to loop my needle through this loop. All right, let's try that again. So I go through both ribbons, both sides of the ribbon, and then through the loop of thread. And you can see that stitch that's on top. That's the part that makes it a blanket stitch. Over, through, So I'm just going to finish this, and then um, when I get close to the end, I will show you how to stuff it. So when you have just a little bit left like this, you want to make sure that you pause there and you find material. I talked about this batting that can come from inside of cat and dog toys um, or cotton or something else that is a soft material. You can even use shredded paper, um, especially with something as small as this. What you want to do is you want to really stuff it down to the bottom. So take little pieces at a time, rip them and push them in with your finger and push them down. Okay. And even though it's just a little pillow, it's going to require a bit of stuffing to make it look nice and full. I think I'm going to use one more piece. And then I'm going to continue, finish up my stitching. And as you notice, I did stitch all the way around, even the part that I glued together. And I'm going to stitch the part that was folded just to, for looks, not because I really need to. It's up to you. Um, whether or not you want to do that. I would say if you are doing this blanket stitch, especially in a contrasting color, your thread from your fabric, and it's really going to stand out and show, then I would recommend uh, going all the way around the pillow. Just makes it look a little bit more intentional. If you do it in a color that's really similar to the color of the ribbon, you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, because it won't necessarily show up, but I'm just going to finish it up. And I would say do this a little more slowly and with a little more care than I'm doing here. This is just for demonstration purposes and not doing it quite as neatly as I could be. All right, when you get to the end, you want to make sure that you tie it off. And if you're able to, what you can do is you can tie it partially inside the ribbon so you can pull it through and then create a knot right on the end that you might even be able to tuck inside. If you have a little bit of the knot showing, that's okay too. Okay, and then just cut it off close to the knot without cutting into the knot. And you can see I now have two little pillows. 
for my bed, which I'm going to place inside of the bedroom. And let me show you how that looks. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed watching and learned how to make a rug and a bed for your dollhouse. And next time I will show you more furniture pieces. Have a good day.